You're playing for a 30-point bonus. Here's your first toss-up. For 10 points, why will May 6th be an important day for Charlie's aunt? Oklahoma, Kidwell. Princess Margaret will be married. That's right for 10 points. And Oklahoma earns the first 10 points. And a chance at our first bonus question on today's General Electric College Bowl. The Intercollegiate Battle of Brains, the General Electric College Bowl, presenting outstanding varsity scholars throughout America and brought to you each week by the General Electric Company. General Electric, makers of world-famous portable home appliances, vacuum cleaners, radios, and clocks. Today's contest brings together a fine team of varsity scholars, four Sooners from a great western school, the University of Oklahoma, at Norman, and our current champions, an outstanding quartet of victorious violets, New York University. And now, substituting for Alan Ludden, this week's man with the questions, Don Morrow. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, John, ladies and gentlemen. Hi there, and welcome to the General Electric College Bowl. It's mighty fine to have you with us. Now, let's get started, first of all, and meet the teams. First of all, the University of Oklahoma. Mike Brawley, Norman, Oklahoma. Ada, Oklahoma. Gene Reed, Norman, Oklahoma. Jerry Casperi, Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Clara Sue Kidwell, Muskogee, Oklahoma. And that's Oklahoma. And here they are, our current champions in the College Bowl, New York University. Peter Salas, Bronx, New York. Lynn Hollinger, Brooklyn, New York. Lawrence Kirshner, Brooklyn, New York. Jack Melnick, Bronx, New York. Okay, that's New York University. Now you've met the teams, let me explain the rules. You see, we have two kinds of questions. A toss-up question worth 10 points, and a bonus questions worth a stated number of points. The team that signals first that it knows the answer to a toss-up question must answer it correctly to get a chance at a bonus question. Now, if a team gives a wrong answer to a toss-up question, the other team gets a chance to answer it. Now, you may interrupt on a toss-up question while I'm asking it, but if you do and your answer is wrong, your team is penalized five points, and I must repeat the entire question, giving the other team a chance to answer it. Remember, teams, on a toss-up, the question must be answered by the person who signals first, and only that one person may answer it. The team with the greater number of points at the end of the game is declared the winner and returns, of course, next week to defend its title here in the GE College Bowl. Each week, the General Electric Company will award the school of the winning team a $1,500 GE scholarship grant and of the school of the runner-up a $500 scholarship grant. Our game gets underway directly after this message from General Electric. Curry, I'm sorry your dress isn't ready yet. But I have to sprinkle your clothes before I can iron them. That's the way all mommies do. Not anymore, little girl, as your own mommy can tell you. Because she just bought a new General Electric spray, steam, and dry iron. The only iron with a built-in sprinkler. See? It sprinkles as you iron. Press a button, and a fine mist spray of pleasantly warm water actually does the sprinkling for her. Even stubborn wrinkles smooth right out. And this iron has the famous General Electric Even Flow Steam System, too. It provides a steady, penetrating flow of steam, perfect for cottons and woolens. Push this button, and it's a dry iron. It irons delicate synthetics perfectly. Yes, everything's easy with this new GE iron. I'm glad we mommies don't have to spend all that time sprinkling anymore. It gives us more time to spend with our family. Yes, and you too can give up sprinkling most of your ironing with the wonderful General Electric Spray, Steam, and Dry Iron. All right, the Sooners of Oklahoma won our first toss-up, so here we go at a 30-point bonus question, Oklahoma. Are you ready? Here it is. If I said divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived, you'd know that I was talking about the six wives of Henry VIII of England. Now, for five points apiece, Name them in order. Work as a team, give me only one list, but a word of caution, the names must be in correct order. As soon as you list the name out of order, I must stop you. Go ahead. Uh, Catherine of Aragon, uh, Anne Boleyn, Anne of Cleves, no, Jane Seymour. That's all right, you corrected yourself, go ahead. Anne of Cleves, Catherine Howard, Catherine Parr. That's right for 30 points, I wonder, I wonder if that's where they got the song title, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered. No, I don't suppose so. All right, a 30-point bonus coming up. You ready, teams? Here's your toss-up. The United States hastened the end of the war in the Pacific by the use of the atomic bomb. Now, for 10 points, 
What weapon enabled the English to defeat the French? Oklahoma Kidwell. The crossbow. The crossbow is incorrect. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I must repeat the entire question and uh, penalize you five points. Are you ready, New York? Here's the toss-up. The United States hastened the end of the war in the Pacific by the use of the atomic bomb. For ten points, what weapon enabled the English to defeat the French at the Battle of Crecy? New York. Kirshner. The longbow. The longbow is correct for ten points. All right, New York. Here is your 30-point bonus. Here's a question about Indians who made good. Ten points for each one that you can name. The Wampanoag chieftain who lived it up with the Pilgrims on that very first Thanksgiving. Squanta. Squanta. No, I'm sorry, that's not correct. It was Massasoit. All right, the Shoshone woman who was chief guide and interpreter for Lewis Sa and Clark. Sacagawea. Sacagawea is right for ten points. All right, the Cherokee who devised an alphabet for his own language. Joseph Brandt? No, I'm sorry. Is that your answer? It's Sequoia, or also known as George Gist, or Gist, or George Guess. All right, you got 10 points instead of a possible 30, New York. Here we go with a 30-point mathematical bonus. Here's your toss-up, teams. Here's your toss-up for 10 points. In what college course might you study the square of opposition between propositions? Oklahoma, Brawley. Logic. Logic, or philosophy, is correct for 10 points, Oklahoma. All right. Very good. Here's your 30-point mathematical bonus, so get your pencil and your paper out. Listen carefully now and figure fast. Take the number of heads that Hecate had, multiply by the number of legs a true insect normally possesses, add the number of eyes the knight has, according to Francis Bourdillon, and subtract the number of fingers Nike of Samothrace has. Now, for 30 points, what is your numerical answer? This is your bonus. You don't have oh. to buzz. 1018. Okay. 1018 10, is correct. <laughs> By word of explanation, Hecate's three heads times six insect legs equals 18. 18 plus 1,000. The knight has 1,000 eyes. 1,018. Very good, Oklahoma. Another 30-point bonus coming up. Are you ready, teams? Here's your toss-up. The United States government will take a census this year, or is taking a census this year. Another famous survey, which included a kind of census, was made in England in the year 1086. For 10 points, what do we call this record? Oklahoma, Brawley. Doomsday Book. Doomsday Book is right for 10 points. All right, Oklahoma. We're going to give you three quotations from the speech and writings of a famous American. Now, if you can guess... Is this one famous American? Yes, from, right. that's right, from one famous American. If you can guess his identity, at the first quote, you'll receive 30 points. The second quote, 20 points. And if it takes you three quotations to identify, you will get only 10 points. Now, here we go. The first quotation, he has said, college is mainly a chance to read the books you should have read in high school. Mark Twain. No, no, it's not Mark Twain. All right, here's quote two. You still have a chance at 20 points. He defined home as the place where, when you have to go there, they have to take you in. Will Rogers? No, it's not Will Rogers, but you can still make 10 points, Oklahoma. One of his best known lines of poetry is, something there is that doesn't love a wall. Oh, Robert Frost. Say it. Like Robert Frost. It. Robert Frost is right. 10 points. 10 points on that bonus. All right, we have, we have teams with 25 music bonus coming up. All right, here's your toss-up. Don't buzz too soon on this one, you might get caught. A student taking a geology test classifies marble as igneous, slate as sedimentary, and sandstone as metamorphic. Now assume he would be graded 100 for three correct classifications. What is his score? Oklahoma Reed. 66 and two-thirds. No, I'm sorry. Can you take it, New York? New York, Salas. 33 and one-third. No, his answer would be, his, his score would be zero because marble and slate are both metamorphic and sandstone is sedimentary. That's why we said don't buzz too soon. Okay, we still have the same 25-point bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up. To Eger, the son of Jakey, there were four great mysteries. The way of an eagle in the air, the way of a serpent upon a rock, the way of a ship in the midst of the sea, and for 10 points, you tell me the fourth. New York, Melody. 
The way of a man with a maid. The way of a man with a maid is right for 10 points, New York. <laughs> Very good. All right, New York University, here's your musical bonus for 25 points. As every would-be songwriter knows, the moon is pretty surefire stuff. Stan Freeman is going to play parts of the chorus of five moon songs which have made the grade. Now, you're going to get five points for each one you can name. Here goes. Stan? Moon over Miami. No, I'm sorry, it's Moonlight and Roses. Stan? Carolina Moon. Carolina Moon is right. Very good. All right. That's Moon, Moon, Miami. Miami. That's Moon over Miami. Next one, Stan. Moon might be comes. No, Takers, no. It's Moon Song. The last one now, Stan. Point bonus coming up. Here's your toss up for 10 points. According. All right, there's the whistle that ends the first half, and the score is Tom, University of Oklahoma 95, New York University 45. We'll take time out. We'll take time out to talk to these teams in just a moment. First, General Electric and I have a message that should be of very special interest to you, high school juniors and seniors. You have a chance to win a $5,000 college scholarship. Now listen closely as we tell you all about it. Well, here's a contest that's both easy to enter and fun to work on. Now all you have to do is name this General Electric shirt pocket radio. And here are some clues that may help you. First of all, it's the smallest General Electric radio made. It fits into a shirt pocket with ease, tucks away neatly into a handbag, weighs only 11 ounces, and, as you can see, is the ideal traveling companion. Sportsmen will tell you its reception and tone are remarkably good. It stands on its own little easel, and it's General Electric's smallest radio, but it does need a name. So get yourself a contest entry blank from your General Electric dealer tomorrow. And who knows, you may win the $5,000 college scholarship and trip for two to Europe or one of the 22 additional scholarships, and encyclopedias, phonographs, and radios. As a matter of fact, 89 prizes in all. So get your entry blank from your General Electric dealer and give this little radio a name. Remember, contest closes May 31st. Well, here I am again. Now, it's our custom here in the College Bowl to see some film from the Challenging Teams campus, and this week to tell us about the University of Oklahoma is Gene Reed. Gene? Thank you, Don. The main campus of the University of Oklahoma is located in Norman with 10,000 resident students from 46 states and 48 countries. Center of Student Activity is Bazell Memorial Library, one of the finest in the West. The University of Oklahoma Press has published over 450 books by famous authors and scholars. Since 1944, 36 modern buildings have been constructed to handle the increasing enrollment and the greater demands for higher education. The new Oklahoma Center for Continuing Education will provide one of the nation's major centers for adult education. The students are justifiably proud of the academic excellence and professional abilities of the OU faculty. And the state is proud of OU's Research Park under construction at North Campus. Research Park will be an area for industry to join the university in cooperative research of important scientific problems. Though only 67 years old, the university has and always will stress the highest academic standards and facilities in teaching and research. Thank you, Gene. <laughs> now, Peter, the purpose of our halftime break is to acquaint the viewer with the school as well as the student. Now, we know that NYU is a large university with many colleges. Would you tell us about your particular college? Well, I'm a student at the University College of Arts and Sciences, which is the oldest college at New York University, founded in 1831, and the smallest with under 1,000 students. Until last September, 1959, the University College was an all-male school. Last September, we admitted co-eds. There are now approximately 138 in attendance. Thank you, Pete. Lynn, we know that you attend the College of Education through our discussion last week. Tell me something about your school. Well, there are 2,000 undergraduates in this school, which was the first uh, university teacher tra training program established in the country in 1890. It trains teachers in all fields 
of elementary and secondary training as well as occupational therapy and traumatic arts. Thank you. Larry, tell us about your school. Well, I'm a student at Washington Square College of Arts and Science, which is located at the original site of the university. It was here in the 19th century that Morse did his experiments in uh, telegraphy and uh, Draper's in photography. And also, uh, NYU has a distinction of having the first university chair of fine arts of any school in the country. Thank you, Larry. Jack, tell us about yourself and your college. Well, I'm studying at the College of Engineering. I'm studying engineering physics. Among the uh, curricula offered at the College of Engineering are civil, mechanical, electrical, chemical, industrial, metallurgical, engineering, etc. Uh, about the only uh, curriculum we don't offer, a uh, curriculum we don't offer is petroleum engineering. I suppose if you want that, you can go to the University of Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Now, it's also our custom at the mid-break to say hello and have you people out there meet the coaches of the teams. Now, from New York University, the coach, Professor Henry Noss. <laughs> and the coach... From the University of Oklahoma, Professor Clayton Fever. Okay, let's go back to the game with the score. University of Oklahoma, 95. New York University, 45. Now, please remember, teams, as we go into the second half, the next time that that whistle blows, the game is over. If it blows while I'm asking a question, <coughs> I'll stop. If it blows while you're answering a question, you'll get a chance to answer that one question, but no more. And the team with a greater number of points at the end of the game is, of course, declared the winner. Okay, are you ready? We have a 20-point bonus coming up, and here's your toss-up. For 10 points, according to the title of a poem by Wordsworth, where was he when he wrote? Oklahoma, Casparic. A few miles above Tinner Abbey. I'm sorry. I'll have to penalize you five points and repeat the entire question for New York. You ready? Where was he when he wrote inland Within a hollow vale I stood, and saw, while sea was calm and air was clear, the coast of France, the coast of France, how near. New York, Salis. Dover Beach. I beg your pardon? Dover Beach. Dover is correct for 10 points. <laughs> All right, New York. <laughs> Here's your 20-point bonus. This modern man's philosophical position is many-sided. But naturalism, which he is supposed to have described as that vulgar belief in material things about us is his basic theme. For 20 points, what's the name of the man? Is it John Dewey? John Dewey? No, I'm sorry, it's George Santayana. All right, we have a 30-point bonus coming up. Here is your toss-up for 10 points. Who's supposed to have said, Paris is well worth a mass, and gave up his Protestant faith to become... New York, Kirshner. Henry IV of France. That's right, Henry of Navarro, Henry IV of France. All right, New York. Here's your 30-point bonus. You all know Walt Whitman's lovely poem, When Lilacs Last in the Dooryard Bloom. But for 10 points apiece, quote the line of the Alfred Noyes poem, which bids us visit the site of the world's great botanical gardens when the lilacs are in bloom. Come to the queue in lilac time and lilac time and lilac time. Come to the queue in lilac time. It isn't far from London. All right, that's close enough. Go down to the queue in lilac. Can we accept that, Judge? We cannot accept it. I'm sorry. All right, you can still make 20 points. Quote the first two lines of the T.S. Eliot poem, mentioning lilacs. Oh. All right, time. A April is April April this is month, month. breathing lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire. No points. All right, finally, tell us who wrote, heart leaves of lilac all over New England, roots of lilac under all the soil of New England, lilac in me because I am New England. Frost? No, that was Amy Lowell in her poem, Lilacs. No points. All right, we have a 20-point bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up for 10 points. Where might you be, according to the title of this music? Oklahoma, Broly. Kiev. I beg your pardon? Kiev, Russia. No, that's not right. May, uh, New York? New York, tell us. You are in the, muse in the Moscow Museum looking at an exhibition of pictures. All right, you're in an art gallery. Judge, can I accept that answer? All right, that's right for 10 points. Okay. All right, here's your 20-point bonus, New York. The movements of the Earth, the Moon, and Sun result in eclipses. For 10 points apiece, tell us. During a lunar eclipse, which of the three bodies is in the center? The Earth is in the center. The Earth is right for 10 points. 
during a solar eclipse, which is the center? The moon. The moon, the moon is right for 10 points. Oh. Very good. All right, we have a 25-point visual bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up. 25-point visual bonus coming up. Now, for 10 points in this toss-up, where would you go to see the Cross of Kong, the Book of Kells, and the Rock? New York, Salus, the British Museum. No. I will penalize you five points and repeat the entire question for Oklahoma. For 10 points, where would you go to see the Cross of Kong, the Book of Kells, and the Rock of Cashel? Dublin. Oklahoma, probably. That's right. It's Ireland. Dublin is good enough. All right. Okay, Oklahoma. Here's your 25-point visual bonus. By the end of 1960, these new sovereign African states are scheduled to come into existence. Now, we're going to unveil this easel. I'll point to each in turn, and as I do, you name them for five points apiece. Number one. Cameroons. No, I'm sorry, that's the Republic of Togoland. Number two. Nigeria. Nigeria is correct for five points. Number three. Cameroons. That's right for five points. Number four. Belgian Congo. Belgian Congo is right for five points. Number five. Somaliland. Somaliland is right. <laughs> All right, very good. James, I have a 20-point bonus coming up, and here's your toss-up. For 10 points, in what constellation of the Zodiac is the stellar center around which the entire Milky Way appears to rotate? Oklahoma, probably. Little different. No, I'm sorry. Can you take it, New York? New York, Melnick. Hercules. No, it's Sagittarius or the Archer. No points for either team. All right, still a 20-point bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up. Tennessee Williams wrote Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. For 10 points, who wrote The Owl in the Attic and The Seal? New York, Salas. James Thurber. James Thurber is right. <laughs> All right, here's your bonus, New York. An esophagus is a tube that leads to your stomach. Now, for 20 points, what is a sarcophagus? That's a, a casket. A casket. All right, that's close enough. It's a coffin, an ancient tomb, a casket. Very good for 20 points. All right, another 20-point bonus coming up. Here's your toss-up teams. You ready? Oklahoma, New York. Okay, for 10 points, tell us, was Prometheus Pandora's husband, father, or brother-in-law? Oklahoma, Kidwell. Brother-in-law. Brother-in-law is right, Oklahoma. <laughs> okay. The Sooners earn themselves a 20-point bonus. Sometimes, fictional characters do strange things. For 20 points, identify. A character in a children's classic who had to run as fast as her legs could carry her to remain in the same place. Alice in Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland or the Red Queen. Very good, for 20 points. Okay. Okay. Another 20-point bonus coming up, teams. The Maid of Norway died before she could be crowned Queen of Scotland. For 10 points, what happened to the maid of Doremi? New York, Melnick. She was burned at the stake. That's right, it was Joan of Arc, and she was burned at the stake. Okay, New York, here's your 20-point bonus. For 20 points, what service, and I don't mean Robert W., famous in American history, was established by the firm of Russell, Majors, and Waddell? Western was... Union Tech... No, no, I'm sorry, you were wrong anyway, uh, Jack. It's the Pony Express. Okay, still a 20-point bonus coming up. Lee Hunt, here's your toss-up. Lee Hunt wrote a poem about Abu Ben Adam. For 10 points, who wrote a poem about Rabbi Ben Ezra? New York, Salas. Robert Browning. Robert Browning is right for 10 points. All right, New York, here's your 20-point bonus. Students who attend this school could study under such great architects as Gropius and Breuer and such great... New York, This, this is your question anyway. Bauhaus. The Bauhaus is right. I was going to say great modern artist... Kandinsky and Paul Clay. All right, all right. We have a 20-point bonus coming up. Uh, uh, here is your toss-up, teams. These three people all have the same last name. A 19th-century English poet, a special assistant to FDR, and the founder of a Maryland university. What was the name? New York Hollanders. Hopkins. Hopkins is right for 10 points. All right, okay. It's a 20-point bonus. A utopia is an imaginary ideal community, a utopia. If the community is the reverse of ideal, the work is sometimes called an anti-utopia. Now, for 10 points, in what book about an anti-utopia? That's it. That's it. I was in the middle of a question, so I stopped. The game's over. We'll validate the scores in just a moment and announce the winners and award the scholarship grants. Whether your home is mostly hardwood floors or covered from wall to wall, 
you can now clean both perfectly with General Electric's new do-everything floor polisher. It's actually a polisher, scrubber, and rug cleaner all in one. No more expensive rug cleaning bills. You can do it yourself right at home, quickly and thoroughly, as easily as vacuuming. Scrubs floors, too. This back-breaking job is a cinch with General Electric's new do-everything floor polisher. And it scrubs without splashing because of this exclusive splash guard. For polishing, nothing beats the new General Electric. See how it brings out the rich, beautiful gleam of wood. And later, when signs of wear begin to show up on your newly polished floors, a touch-up buffing will bring them back to their original sheen. You'll find yourself re-waxing far less often. There's an attachment for every floor care job, and they snap on as easily as this. Yes, it's really a snap to care for your floors with the new General Electric Do-Everything Floor Polisher. Your General Electric dealer will be glad to give you a free demonstration. It's official. The final score today is New York University 170, the University of Oklahoma 150. New York University is the winner. Wow. For carrying home the honors today, New York University will receive a $1,500 scholarship grant from the General Electric Company. And to uh, Oklahoma, a great job that you did, General Electric's $500 scholarship grant. You know, this week, Americans will be observing National Library Week, a nationwide effort to encourage better reading habits and the use and support of our libraries. Now, all of us could spend more time enjoying the pleasures and challenges of good books. With this in mind, the General Electric Company has made arrangements with Dartmouth College to secure a limited number of these very handy reading guides. Over 100 books with brief descriptions are listed here. Now, although this index was originally intended for Dartmouth freshmen and sophomores, General Electric feels sure that many of you parents with teenagers could put this list to good use this spring and summer. A guide to good reading. And if you'd like a copy, we'll be more than happy to send one to you. Write to the General Electric College Bowl, Box 3134, Grand Central Station, New York City, New York. And close a self-addressed large business envelope. No charge, of course. Now, in just a moment, Tom Reddy will bring you news of next week's contest. Your old clocks may be worth as much as $3. Now, many General Electric clock dealers are offering trade-in allowances on snooze alarm clocks. With the alarm that wakes you, lets you snooze, then wakes you again. This model even has a dial that lights up at night. Buy one of these snooze alarm clocks and save up to two or three dollars depending on the model. Offers limited. Today, we've watched a General Electric College Bowl contest between the University of Oklahoma and New York University. Next week, winning NYU will defend its title against a challenging team from Colgate University, Hamilton, New York. And in the weeks to come, we'll have teams from the University of Washington, Randolph-Macon Women's College, University of Texas, many more great schools. Quest and Jews on the General Electric College Bowl are auth authenticated through the research facilities of the Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> Remember to join us again next Sunday when Colgate meets NYU on the College Bowl. Brought to you live every week at this time by the General Electric Company. At General Electric, progress is our most important product. So long, everybody. We'll see you next week.